But first, a message from our sponsor. Comic books have come a long way over the years. They've always been wonderful works of art, but it took the public a while to catch on. We've also seen comics journey from a cheap disposable entertainment to hard-bound, designed with painstaking craft, and back again. And not only does the look of comics range from tiny folding zines with single images to 600-page epics and oversized artist editions, but the subject matter that these stories cover is infinite. Comic books, even American comics, were never just about superheroes, and genre type means less in comics than any other art form. The relationship between words and pictures is the essence of comics, and that is ingrained in the DNA of humanity. Comic books are world culture. From fun fantasy to entertaining education, there is something in comics for every person. In this show, we'll check out the comics that I come across in my own journey to becoming the cartoonist that I want to be. All of the books that you'll see were either purchased directly from the creators or, in most cases, from local comic shops. So when we find something that interests you, please head to your friendly neighborhood comic shop where small business owners and nice people are ready to help. But there's only one way you're going to find that perfect story. Read more, more comics. comics. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Read More Comics. I am Scott O'Green, your host, and with me today are three new comics for you. We have Maestros, which is a story about magical deities with a new ruler and an ancient evil, a Street Angel about the deadliest girl alive, and Elf Cat about finding um, his new love, I suppose. Alright, let's see here. An irresistible Elf Cat, deadliest girl, new magical deity, Okay, I want to do the first comic about the most powerful being in the universe, so let's check it out. Mm, yeah, that's what I thought. Looks like comic magic has spoken. This is one tough chick. This is a great story. I don't want to flip through the whole thing because it's not uh, the longest story. It is a beautiful hardbound book that comes courtesy of Image Comics. It's called Street Angel, the After School Kung Fu Special. Um, and I think this might be my new favorite book. Um, it's a great comic, as well as you can see the love of comics from Jim Rugg. Uh, he's the artist and kind of co-writer, I think, along with Brian Maruka, the uh, the author. So uh, you can just really see like the love letter to comics throughout the whole thing. It's a theme kind of in a, a middle school, a very dangerous middle, uh, middle school with metal detectors, because where else would Street Angel go to middle school? when she only goes once in a while anyways. But, um, like the beginning is, is set up like a textbook that you just scribble all in, like we've all done. And when you look around, there's lots of great little info in there and uh, fun stuff to see. So after you read the comic, there's just a lot of extras in this, including, I'm gonna flip to the back here, because I don't wanna show too much, but there's just great extras, more <laughs> brass knuckles, because why wouldn't she be doodling nunchucks and brass knuckles and size and switchblades? All the good things. Um, a little bit about the creators here. Um, but you get a great kind of building of the comic page, kind of courtesy of uh, Jim Rugg. And it really steps through everything, which me, uh, as an aspiring creator, and I think just for the random fan, it's fun to see this sort of thing. And he kind of chose one of my favorite pages in the book to really kind of illustrate all this stuff with. But showing from script and concept um, to you know, rough pencils and pencils into uh, flats and colors and even like a pre-print uh, turning each comic into a zine before they really go to print so they can really like see a physical copy of it before they send it to print and uh, really put all the thought into what kind of paper stock and why. I think Jim Rugg is really thinking about all these things, um, but it comes off looking pretty effortless and just a joy to read. And then um, Brian Maruka has an awesome little excerpt here about how to write comics. So that's just in the extras of the book. But uh, the actual book, she's, uh, she's what, like 13 or so. She's in middle school. Her name is uh, Jesse Street Angel Sanchez. And she just shows up to school once in a while when she's not saving the world, it looks like. And first thing when she shows up, there's a note on her locker that says 3.30 at the yard. So she knows somebody's um, wanting to fight. And it, it's hard to say too much without uh, giving much away, 
but one thing I wanted to say is the proportion of having like a young adolescent girl as a fighter I think is kind of genius because you're able to have like this thin nimble person but he can really pack the power into stuff um, cartooning wise so it never I don't know how to explain it. It's like kind of the genius of like the Donald Duck character and like the duck cartooning characters that you can fit into panels real easy as the whole bodies and everything. But there's just like a loosey goosiness to this and you don't have to draw these big bulky muscles. And you don't have to draw these big oversized women and dudes who look like they can't hardly move. But you get a lot of expression and a lot of movement with uh, fewer lines and you still represent all of that strength and gravity that you get from you know all the folks with the big muscles and the big heavy machinery and and big guns and all that sort of stuff but you really do get the sense of the uh, um, deadliest girl alive and I love this composition here where it just shows like you don't nobody with my food and uh, I don't know it's just all of these sequences are really awesome the page that it showed um, as the building of um, was a lot of this one here which this like and like leading up to it there's such like charming parts to it with their, it still being like middle school children with her like best friend there how she interacts with her is great and cute and when you see how like just this little added thing here where like it goes to an open panel after she's trying to figure out who's the one kind of setting her up for the fight or whatever as this one's talking to her about the dance which she's just not concerned with um, so as this is going on, she's kind of eyeing out the enemy and trying to locate the enemy and everything and then spots the enemy and calls that person out rather quickly. And then it's just a very intense moment that calms down with her just kind of kicking a ball away, do left in the background on the ground. And then this other guy with little hearts floating around his head. I'm so in love. I don't know, just little moments like that are awesome. And how it goes to the open panel here after being in the close panel, she slowly just walks away nonchalant. That's all she meant to do. She wasn't starting the fight. She was just like, okay, I'll see you at 3.30. But uh, like I said, I, I don't want to go. This is when somebody messes with her food. <laughs> so she she's a, a raging uh, demoness when she wants to be, it sounds like. But I'm definitely going to pick up more of these comics, and there's a decent amount of them. And the story has been running off and on for quite a few years from what I understand. And... Because of Cartoonist Kayfabe, I picked this up because Jim Rugg is half a Cartoonist Kayfabe. And I was like, well, I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Once again, this might not have been a bright pink book. You know, I don't know. It just may not have been the first thing on the shelf I go to when there's a sea of comic books. Although it is a striking, beautiful cover. But since I knew Jim Rugg from Cartoonist Kayfabe, I wanted to give it a shot because he knows his comics. And uh, in reading this, it's no joke. This guy knows what's going on and he brings it in force. Um, not to undercut the story by Brian Maruka, I don't know like halvesies or this or that or how it all goes, but I know visually what we're seeing and we got a lot to look at in these pages um, and just a lot of really smart cartooning. Um, I know that the, uh, that is courtesy of Jim Rugg and it's good stuff. So because of Cartoonist Kayfabe, I checked out this comic. Because of this comic, I'm going to be checking out more Street Angel and other things that Jim Rugg does. Um, because I want to see what else Jim Rugg does, but for right now, I, I want to find out what she's up to. Because I know she battles ninjas and all sorts of uh, different kinds of folk. Uh, so, big Converse shoe coming at you. You know it immediately, even before you sort of see this one here. And part of the reason you can tell is because of, like, the flaking off of the rubber on the sole and how smooth parts are with just a little bit of tread left. It's just genius stuff like that. But anyway, I highly recommend this comic. It's bright, it's colorful, it's fun to look at. Um, great fight scenes. Like this thing. Really, it's kind of like this is the first panel and that's the second panel, so to speak. But he's really wanting to show, uh, uh, you know, a right cross, a, a right hook. I don't know. I don't know my boxing, but it comes across so great. And I just think that that's a genius double page spread in this whole big fight scene. I don't want to settle too long on it because I want you to go out and buy it. Whether you get it from Jim Rugg's uh, website, which I'll have uh, below, or you go to your local comic shop, which is always a good idea as well, um, I think you should definitely check out Street Angel After School Kung Fu Special. Not a long story for a hardbound book, but worth every penny, especially with all those extras packed in. Alright, what do we have next? Just so you guys know, I'm never going to get tired of the comic magic.
Ah, Maestros. This is a great one. Let me adjust my light a little bit. These shiny page books, I don't have the, the best lighting, so I just kind of have to figure it out on the fly. All right, so this book is called Maestros. Uh, first off, I'm going to apologize, uh, Mr. Steve. Your last name, I'm going to pronounce it uh, Scrouse. Um, I don't know if that's right. I, I did look it up in a couple different interviews and videos, but it seemed like everybody pronounced it differently. And uh, you're a kind and uh, funnily sarcastic gentleman, so I'm not really sure what the real way to say your name is. Um, but written and um, art by Steve Strauss. I don't know if I even just said that a, a second way that time. Uh, Dave Stewart on colors and phonographics. It looks like on lettering, I can only assume. Uh, so yeah, the reason, one of the main reasons I picked this book up is front and center, I did see Dave Stewart um, on top of awesome art. And Dave Stewart is a colorist that I really love and admire, and basically anything that he's coloring is interesting, at least looking, but it always tends to be um, he's attracted by you know, good storytellers, so it's always kind of fun to see what's going on. Uh, second, this is an image book. Uh, I fell in love with image through... Um, like, um, let's see here, Saga and Chu and Southern Bastards and just, you know, countless others, really. And there's just more coming out all the time. I have to kind of slowly flip through this one because I'm not going to lie. There is, as you can see, very um, graphic violence and everything, which is strange that I guess I don't have as much of a hesitation to show you. But there is some very graphic sexual stuff as well of an unpleasant, overweight oil baron from Texas that uh, we don't necessarily need to see here on YouTube. Um, so anyway, um, it's violent. Um, it does have some uh, goofy graphic sexual stuff, um, but all of it is kind of um, in an adventure humor nature and everything. Um, you have a talking sword, which that can't be wrong. You have magical beings um, with a massacre from... I just don't know what page to flip through. There's a decent, <laughs> there's a lot of great art, but there's some graphic stuff. Part of it takes place in a strip club in the beginning. I, I don't know that it stays there the whole time. Honestly, I picked up a, a whole bunch of these at a Van Calf, I believe, uh, last year, um, and bought them from the uh, author artist. Uh, I saw them there, and I was like, well, I got to give it a try. <clears throat> And to be honest with you, uh, they've kind of just been in my to-read box, which uh, unfortunately has too much stuff in it right now. So a good part of this show. So I haven't read through the others, so I don't know if the sexual part of it is just kind of something here at the beginning with the graphic nature, just sort of showing the very earthy, strange existence that the main character is living at the moment. And then it'll move on from there just to kind of the magical battle of evil and all of that stuff, or what. Um, but it does exist in the first issue. But with what happens, I'm definitely going to be reading the rest. I really enjoy the story. The main character was a fun, interesting person to read. Uh, the mother figure um, was also equally interesting. The artwork is stellar. The colors are stellar. Um, plus, there's an interesting sort of creation story of uh, the uh, uh, universe in this one, which is pretty rad, um, which was really strange. Sorry, I'm still kind of half uh, censoring as I go. I think I've sort of passed all of the parts that might uh, ruffle uh, somebody's feathers, and we don't want to do that. But anyway, there was weird parts about this story I, I kind of identified with. The kid was a chubby little smart ass as a young kid. Um, my father wasn't a uh, evil, magical guy from, you know, far away or anything like that, but I did live up, I did grow up um, in divorced parents where I lived, you know, southern Missouri, and dad lived up in Nebraska, so far away you don't see your family together all that often and when you do see your family together it's nice and awkward but uh, there is some really funny moments in this being that this is a um, a father figure that he's never seen before from a magical realm and meeting him for the first time and being taken away he thinks kind of Harry Potter style to like learn magic and it's definitely not that it's a much more dangerous thing but as you can see just amazing art uh, amazing colors I already said it but these double page spreads just give you so much to look at and to go back to this kind of strange um, uh, faux Lord of the Rings hobbits thing. And there's a few of that kind of going on in this part right here, which was just kind of like there's been the endless struggle of good and evil, and that became boring. But anyhow, I really highly suggest it. It was a lot of fun to read. Image, uh, you know, I think strikes gold again on this one. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited to see how it unfolds. I don't know exactly where it's going, which is always fun because it's not a story 
um, that seems ultra predictable, um, which I like. So adventure, uh, goofy, funny, sarcastic, um, bloody, violent, uh, sexual, colorful, a lot of great stuff. I highly recommend it. So yeah, this came uh, out about two years ago. Uh, in October was the first issue. So two year anniversary, check it out. There's going to be plenty to read as a result of that. So whether you find some trades, I don't know if there's a hardcover or if you just find them, um, uh, yeah, in, in this form at your local comic shop. But like I said, swing by there first, see what you can find at your local shop, dig through the bins if you have to. If you don't find this one right away, man, you're going to find something else that's beautiful. All right, last but not least, Elf, Cat, and Love, another fun, funny book. So let's try this one. <laughs> that didn't work. All right, let's stick to the uh, magic of the snap. Bang. All right, there we go. Now we're here with the adorable Elf Cat in this tale of Elf, Cat, and Love by James Kachalka. Um, I first heard of Mr. Kachalka on the uh, Dan Barry interview podcast radio show on the interwebs um, it's called make it then tell everybody I highly recommend that series for anybody who likes a peek behind the curtain um, uh, and to really kind of see into the mind of cartoonists and everything and they're all pleasant talks um, Dan Barry's voice reminds me of James McAvoy so you have a very pleasant Professor X to kind of guide you uh, through the warped mind of the cartoonist. It's great. Um, but anyway, so we start off with a, a, a very independent looking uh, image book and then a very hardcore sell at the shop image book. And now we've kind of snapped back the other way to a very independent one. And this is a $15 book that I got at um, the Push Pull down near Seattle um, in the, uh, I forget the exact uh, neighborhood or district or town or, or whatnot that it's in, but um, it's, it's outskirts of Seattle and it's a great shop because it's very indie. It's very just zines. You won't really find image stuff or things of that nature there. So, um, this is a very well produced item there. Some of them are very kind of stapled, uh, you know, photocopied and stapled together. This was something with a little bit of love. And then I saw that name on there, James Kachalka. Once again, a book that I wouldn't normally have bought at the time that I bought it, but I saw that name on there from that interview and thought I'm going to give it a chance. So it's a black and white book. Um, here, the, This is the size of uh, a, ma a regular comic, and this is the size of this one. So a nice little handy one about the size of uh, Analog Missions by my man David Fleming from I'd Rather Be Drawing. Yep, that was a plug for you, brother. Anyway, it's a very, uh, once again, simple is not a bad word when it comes to comics. And simple done well is not an easy feat. And James Kachalka does simple well. Um, so you see a kind of snowy forest land. Um, chapter one there. It's just black and white art. Very kind of thick lines to everything. I really enjoy reading this comic. Um, the uh, lettering... Once again, it doesn't look complicated. It looks easy, I guess you could say, quote unquote. Um, but it comes off great with like the way he underlines certain words for certain effects, the simple um, uh, ways that he draws the eyes give you a lot of expression. And then there's you know a magical frozen enchanted hot dog. So it's a great one. It's another just funny, goofy. Um, you know, has some charming moments here and there between Elf Cat and the magical tennis ball uh, that he calls Tennis Ball. So you have Elf Cat and Tennis Ball on their adventures. And it just so happens in this one, the theme of Elf Cat and Love, it just seems that everything he's running into at his peril is in love with him. Um, and there's a lot of expression in these simple forms uh, <laughs> that you see with all this stuff. I don't know where something like Elf Cat comes from. Um, a sick, sick mind, I think. I don't know, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun to read, and uh, I breezed through it again. I'd read it before, and I breezed through it again for this one because it is something a little bit different that I do recommend, um, especially if you want something on the cuter side. And I know that, you know, cute and simple can both be words I feel like that uh, some folks find is derogatory with their artwork, but um, mine has been called that at different times, and I took it as a compliment, and and, uh, and offer it as one here because it's not an easy thing to do. 
Um, especially when you have such great expression with stuff. You can kind of see a fun, simple animation of this going in your head as it's going, which I think is also um, good storytelling. And it's just excellent cartooning. You still get really cool pen work stuff like this uh, when you have all of this going on. So might come off as simple, but uh, that's a good thing in this one. Not everything has to be, uh, you know, sex and murder when you're reading a comic. It can be just uh, adventures through the forest finding love. And uh, maybe it was something that was floating next to you all along. You never know. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, it's charming. I think that's a good um, name for it. But Dragon takes his magic wand from him. Uh, it's really just a hot dog on a stick that he went to cook uh, on the dragon's fire, but, you know, stuff happens. I highly recommend this one. I want to search out some other of uh, Mr. Kachalka's work. I don't know if there's a whole bunch of different elf cat tales or just other um, books and stories from him. I don't know anything else, so I'm excited to see more because this is a lot of fun to read. And this is the stuff that I feel like, too, that um, I could read, my niece could read it, um, we could giggle about the same parts um, and think the same parts are funny. And it also kind of offers me lessons in the mind and the world of a cartoonist um, with just this, you know, the black and white. There's not a whole, there's not cross hatching, there's not um, gradients, there's not uh, screen tones, it's just black and white. And really offers a pretty rich world in that, so... Aw, oh, and then you get a little bit of love. Nothing wrong with that. So that one's Elf, Cat, and Love. Another one that I recommend. They're all good comics. Once again, don't uh, go to Amazon to look for this stuff. Search out, you know, James Kachaka on social media. Search out your local comic shop. Go support those people. They're offering pretty cool stuff in the world, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So thanks very much for joining me for another episode of Read More Comics. Uh, remember, it comes out every Wednesday, which is the day for new comic books at your comic shop. So if you want something new and different, check out the show, then head to your comic shop. Thanks very much. You guys, take it easy. Bye. If you don't know already, Cartoonist Kayfabe is a huge inspiration behind this show. After all, it is the marching order set forth by Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor, along with Tom Scioli, that gave rise to this segment in the first place. Cartoonist Kayfabe on YouTube is essential for comic book readers and aspiring cartoonists alike. It's the comic book show that the creators are watching. Anyhow, thank you Professors Piscor, Rug, and Scioli. The education is appreciated. Find Cartoonist Kayfabe's link below.